Most physicists who know the story will agree that Rosalind Franklin, who first determined that DNA molecule was a double helix, is one of the people who deserved the Nobel Prize the most, but didn't get it. But how did Rosalind Franklin produce this first best photo of DNA? And why would a checkered X look like a double helix? In today's video, we will teach you how to reproduce Rosalind Franklin's photograph 51 without the use of dangerous X-rays. Rosalind Franklin's photographic techniques relied on the wave property diffraction. Today, diffraction is a common experiment in high school physics classes. Franklin used X-rays, which have very short wavelengths, to image something much smaller, DNA. Light waves fall on an object with a patterned shape, and it makes a diffraction pattern that can be easily analyzed and used to determine the original object. Whether it's a salt crystal, graphite, or even DNA, diffraction patterns have been used to image them all. When the x-rays hit the DNA, they diffract into a pattern. From the pattern, the molecule's shape can be determined. Franklin generated x-rays and aimed them at the DNA. Then the x-rays diffracted and landed on photographic paper. But well, why did she have to use x-rays? Well, it turns out that the wavelength of x-rays is so much shorter than the wavelength of visible light that you can make images of objects that are that much smaller. In our experiment, we will be using visible light, which has a longer wavelength than x-rays. And we'll be imaging something much larger, a small helical spring, like the type you might get out of a pen. Using a blue laser, I can make any pattern I want on this phosphorescent vinyl sheet, and it will stay. When I shine the laser through the helical spring, I get the signature X pattern that indicates any helix. You will notice that I am blocking the bright center dot of the image just like Franklin did. This is necessary because the dot in the center is so bright that if I didn't do this, it would overexpose the film. Now you might be thinking, why should a helix result in an X pattern? If you were to look at a helix straight on, it would look very much like a sine wave. And a sine wave looks very much like a pattern of zigs and zags, or two crossed stripes. When I crisscross these two slits, you will notice that I make an X. Based on the angle of the cross, I will get a different angled X. And this is how Franklin figured out the stretchedness, or the pitch, of the DNA helix. Now you might be thinking, DNA is way more than a double helix. It's a bunch of adenine, guanine, cytosine, and thymine. I mean, where's the rest? Well, the rest was invisible. Just like x-rays only see your calcinous bones and don't take pictures of the nitrogenous proteins and hydrocarbons in your fleshy hands, Franklin's x-rays were only diffracted by the phosphorus atoms in the DNA. These heavy nuclei were arranged on the DNA backbone. The rest of the DNA was made of much smaller atoms, and mostly invisible. Now that I have my image, I can make various measurements on the helix I photographed. I can measure its pitch or angle, and from this angle I can measure the spacing between the wires, from the distance between the marks. One thing I can also tell is that this is a very thin helix. If it was a thicker helix, or a double helix, we would expect a missing fringe. And this is something that Rosalind Franklin understood perfectly.